Hello Hastings, I'm Tom Wright and welcome to this HCTV special here at the Dakota County's Attorney's Office and with me of course is the, Co the Dakota County Attorney, Jim Backstrom. Jim, uh, thank you for having us here. Tom, it's nice to be with you again, thank you. Yes, and we are here to talk about the 2015 statistics for juvenile crimes and adult felonies and so we're here to get the highlights on those and um, but first Jim, before we dig into the numbers, Tell us, um, give us an overall um, assessment on what you, how the numbers turned out. Was it, a, is this good news we're going to get into, uh, not so good, or a mixed, mixed review? You know, I think overall it's very positive news. Uh, uh, you know, there's an issue or two which we'll get into and talk about. Drug offenses mm -hmm. uh, involving adults uh, uh, were up fairly significantly. That's a concern, big concern. But you know, overall, uh, it, it's really good news, especially in the area of juvenile crime. And, and I will say this, and I think it's important for your listeners and viewers to, to uh, understand is that, you know, Dakota County is a, is a very safe community overall. We have a population of 412, 415,000 people that live here now. And I think if you looked across America on counties that were similar in our size, you know, we have one of the lowest uh, violent crime rates uh, in our country uh, here in Dakota County. That's not to say we don't have some violent crime. We do. And unfortunately, uh, 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 one is one too many. But uh, uh, you know, this is a relatively safe county in which to live, and uh, it's important for your viewers to understand that. Well, that's good to hear. Let's get started with our juvenile crimes. Before we get into the numbers, um, who and what are we talking about when we're talking about juvenile crimes? Well, juveniles are uh, anyone who's under the age of 18 at the time a cr crime occurs is considered to be a juvenile. Uh, and under Minnesota law, uh, that goes down to age 10. You can't charge someone with a crime under the age of 10. I, I am really happy to tell you that in 2015, we didn't prosecute any juveniles as adults in Dakota County. And that's a pretty remarkable thing in a county that has over 400,000 people. That is great news. Another good news is that the numbers are down. They continue to go down. Uh, 1,029 cases in 2015. Um, which continues to decline the last 10 years. Looks like 44% drop since 2006. So a uh, question on that, uh, who or what gets the credit? What, what do you attribute that to? Well, it's really remarkable, you know, uh, Tom, that we've had over the last 10 years, uh, we've had nine of those years, uh, we've had declines in uh, juvenile crime, uh, basically steadily down, one little blip upwards in, in 2012, but uh, back down again for the last three years. Uh, um, and again, uh, it's important to keep in mind, you know, of the, uh, uh, the juvenile crimes we charge, the vast majority are misdemeanor level offenses because mm -hmm. when we talk about juvenile crime, the county attorney prosecutes all juvenile crime. Uh, unlike adults, where we only prosecute felony level offenses primarily, and city attorneys handle the misdemeanors or the gross misdemeanor offenses, when we're talking about juvenile crime, the county attorney uh, handles everything from, uh, you know, from a curfew violation all the way up to a significant crime of violence. Uh, but most of these cases are misdemeanors, about uh, uh, probably 85, 90 percent of them. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then the, uh, the felony offenses uh, are there as well. But even the, even the felony offenses you know, were basically unchanged. There are 152 uh, felony juvenile crimes prosecuted last year in the same number the year before. And that, that number has also declined from 349 in uh, 2006, so 10 years ago. Uh, it was, uh, you know, more than double the number of uh, violent felony level crimes that were prosecuting some kids. This is really positive news, really positive news in a county of our size. What do I attribute it to? To answer your question, you know, I, I attribute it to a lot of things in terms of uh, uh, prevention, early intervention efforts that, uh, that uh, my office uh, is proud to be involved in uh, with our police partners. We do a, a lot of uh, intervention uh, in schools. You know, there's a number of uh, uh, most high schools, I guess, have a liaison police officer that's present and works with kids to try to resolve things. Listen, and school violence is in the news lately, uh, especially in the Twin Cities. You know, mm -hmm. uh, there's been a little bit too much of it in, in, the, in St. Paul uh, recently. You know, fortunately, we haven't had as much in Dakota County. Uh, but, you know, it's important that we address those issues proactively. And, and we try to do that. And I, I, I think really over the years, that's made a difference. And and you know, and we've just got a you know a good community, and we have a lot of par parents that are that are that are involved and active in their kids' lives too, and that also makes a big difference. So I want to quickly mention that you have it broken down by cities as well. And Hastings, uh, good news with Hastings, it's 49 cases in 2015, um, down from 85 in 2014. So that's a significant drop in there. Yeah, pretty remarkable drop uh, in the city of Hastings. So. Uh, uh, 
Well, that's, a, that's good news, obviously. Um, moving on to youth accountability programs, you had a total of 719 cases referred to these in 2015. Um, just a little bit, just a little bit of uptick from 701 in 2014. Um, quickly, could you tell us uh, what we're talking about? We're talking about youth accountability programs. Well, youth accountability programs are, are commonly referred to as diversion programs. So these are cases that uh, involve juvenile offenses that have, com have been committed, and, you know, typically, again, misdemeanor level offenses, such as disorderly conduct, such as the uh, uh, um, uh, use of alcohol, which mm -hmm. is illegal for anyone under the age of 21. Uh, and uh, uh, use of small amounts of marijuana, uh, which unfortunately uh, are used too frequently by, uh, by teens today. Uh, but listen, kids make mistakes, mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to give them an opportunity, you know, uh, for a first offense, and even in the alcohol and marijuana offenses, even for a second offense, we'll give them an opportunity to, to learn from their mistakes and, uh, and to go into an alternative program outside of the court system mm -hmm. so they avoid a criminal record, criminal history, uh, they avoid any juvenile court sanctions, but what we do is hold them accountable. That's why we call these youth accountability programs. We're just holding them accountable in an alternative way. They're going to do some community work service. If it's a theft, uh, uh, small uh, shoplifting related offense, they're going to uh, make restitution for the loss. Uh, they're going to do some community work service. They're going to be uh, participating with their parent or parents in a class session uh, which basically discusses why did this happen, how did it happen, and what's going to be done to prevent this from happening in the future. Uh, and they're going to have to face up to some consequences for what they've done. And, uh, and we think these are really proactive programs. And I also think these are uh, helpful in terms of reducing crime in our community. And how long have those been around? We've had these in place uh, since I became the county attorney. Uh, shortly after that, I, I started the first one uh, you know, uh, uh, about 28 years ago. and. Uh, uh, and we're, uh, we're moving forward. We have a number of different programs today uh, that we have. And I, I, we've also uh, just recently uh, adopted some for disorderly conduct uh, related offenses in schools. You know, it's one of the more common crimes that we have. And we've looked at that over the years. We have a, a, a real proactive uh, uh, effort in Dakota County. It's called the Juvenile Detention Alternatives Initiative, or JDAI for, for short. And it involves our corrections department, uh, my office, uh, uh, law enforcement, uh, the defense attorneys are, are, are involved uh, in working with this as well, um, uh, and uh, and our schools. Mm. And, and we get together and we talk about, you know, is, how are, what can we do as a county to try to reduce uh, our crime? First of all, it's the goal number one. We'd like to prevent it from occurring. But you know, when it does occur, uh, is there ways that we can deal with uh, these offenses in alternative ways that keep these kids out of detention? And, you know, listen, we've reduced our detention uh, rates over the last seven years that we've had this, I think seven, eight years we've had this program in place. Uh, they probably dropped 40 to 50 percent in terms of the number of kids that we're actually detaining for crime. And we're finding alternative uh, places to, to place them if they need to be out of their home, you know, in a foster care place or whatever. We work with our social services department that's also involved in this effort as well as the, our corrections uh, uh, department with their probation officers. So it's really uh, been uh, positive and proactive and, and we've done, and, and one of the things we found was that uh, a lot of disorderly conduct crimes that come out of school settings, these are kids pushing, fighting, you know, uh, you know, just acting out. And most of those offenses we charge as what we call disorderly conduct. Uh, uh, some of them do get charged as assaults, which are a little bit more serious, like mm -hmm. punches or, or someone being hurt. Uh, but most of them are, you know, kids that are just acting out inappropriately and we call that disorderly conduct and it's a misdemeanor level offense and uh and now we're you know we're, we're doing this you know with an alternative uh, uh uh program an alternative accountability program for the first time disorderly conduct offenses and and uh and we uh, you know i think proactively address a number of those cases out of our court system now great before we move on to adult uh crimes uh, felonies here um what's what's your biggest concern with juveniles and juvenile crime and what are you going to be focused on? Maybe a better way to put it, what are you going to be focused on when it comes to juveniles in the coming year? Well, listen, we, we are obviously concerned about uh, chemical abuse and, and, and misuse. Uh, I mentioned marijuana use before. Uh, there's too, there, there are too many kids today that are experimenting with uh, illegal drugs. Uh, that's a concern, obviously a serious concern for, for all of us in our communities, you know, from, from their parents, number one, uh, to, uh, to the rest of us that deal with this, you know. And... Uh, there's a lot of kids that are harmed by this, you know, and we've seen an explosion in recent years with heroin uh, use and abuse, mostly more in the high school uh, age level. But listen, we have high school kids today that are, that are using heroin. I mean, 
Yes. Even 10 years ago, that was unheard of. And, and, and it, where does it start? It starts with prescription pill abuse, you know, the opiate painkillers that uh, are you know, rampant in our country and quite frankly, uh, in many ways out of control in terms of the over prescription of those painkillers. And, and you know, some of those find their ways in the hands of kids. And then, and then uh, the next step, and it's not that big of a step that you might think, is to buy heroin. It's cheaper to buy heroin on the street than it is to buy a prescription pain pill on the street. Wow. So that's why kids use this stuff and you can get addicted really fast. So anyways, it's very dangerous. It's resulted in a number of over death, uh, overdose deaths. We need to continue to focus efforts on trying to reduce chemical abuse by kids and, and to make sure that, the, that they can be the best they can be. And obviously uh, they can't do that if they're under the influence of, of drugs and, and alcohol too is a, is a, a significant concern uh, in terms of abuse by uh, uh, our young people. Well, let's move on to adult crimes now. Um, this um, unfortunately was an uptick from 2014 of about 13%, it looks like, uh, 1,766 uh, 1, cases uh, versus uh, up from 1,565 1, cases in 2014. Um, is there anything that you can point at to, that would cause this uptick? Well, yeah, absolutely. But, you know, uh, now, first of all, keep in mind, in 2006, we prosecuted 1,904 felony offenses. Mm. Last year, we prosecuted 1,766. Ten years later, we're below where we were a decade ago. Mm -hmm. This county is still growing. You know, this is you know, growing a lot slower than it was in the 1980s, but it's a big county. And, and I think it's important, again, when I t talk about you know, relative, uh, relative safety of our community, keep in mind that we're, we have fewer felonies today than we had. Even though we had a 13% increase from uh, 2014 uh, last year, uh, it's still uh, lower than it was a decade ago. Now, what happened last year? I can tell you it's drug-related offenses uh, that are a concern. And I just talked about those in, in reference to my concerns about uh, kids uh, using uh, 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 dr illegal drugs. Uh, listen, it's a big concern for adults uh, as well. We had uh, 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 an uptick uh, uh, significant uptick uh, uh, of uh, you know 180 some uh, additional uh, cases in terms of uh, 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 felony charges of illegal drugs uh, mm -hmm. substances and methamphetamine uh, led the way with about a 120 uh, seven of those cases uh, increased were, were methamphetamine related uh, offenses that's the number one illegal drug in our county in terms of, uh, uh, of the abuse and the and the charges that we see the felony level charges that we see. Uh, so that's a concern and, and a significant concern. You know, uh, these, these, these drugs cause a lot of havoc in our community. These are not victimless crimes. You know, I hear people refer to, well, it's just drug abuse, you know, and, and uh, it's a victim. These aren't victimless crimes. Listen, the person using it is a victim, mm -hmm. number one. They're, they're harming themselves, but they're also harming uh, our community. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, drug offenders are also committing uh, uh, property thefts and crimes, of uh, 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 property-related crimes to finance their drug habit. They're stealing, uh, you know, there's victims to those crimes. Mm -hmm. And when we look at this, you know, last year, 33% or I think 32, 33% mm -hmm. of our, our entire case, case uh, felony caseload were illegal drug offenses, 32% uh, yeah. last year. You know, that's, and that's just the sale, possession, or manufacture of illegal drugs. If you add in all these other crimes, you know, the robberies, the thefts, the burglaries, the domestic violence that occurs when people are under the influence, the, the sexual assaults, and in some cases even crimes of violence up to and including murders that are related to the illegal drug trade in our community. It's 45 to 50 percent of all the crime in this county, you know, in, in suburban Dakota County, a relatively safe community, but 45 yeah. percent of all our crime is related to illegal drug use. It is the number one uh, crime problem. It has been for, uh, uh, you know, 15 years in our county. Uh, 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 it's, the, it's the biggest concern that we have, and, um, and we have a very active uh, 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 drug task force uh, that, that is, is involved, involving all of our police departments, including Hastings and our sheriff's office uh, that are working together uh, uh, and aggressively to address this crime, and, and rightfully so. Are there any... Uh Thing you can point at as far as how this is more to attribute to the more use is there are they getting more savvy with their distribution or their you know uh, marketing well, to kids you know I, I don't, when, when we were the at the peak of you know we're still you know we were 
299 meth cases last year. When we were at the peak in the mid in the mid uh, 2000s, uh, we were up to uh, you know to 330 uh, uh, meth cases that we charged in in a year. So but we're creeping back up. Mm -hmm. You know, and back back in those days, in the in the early 2000s, uh, uh, a, a lot of meth was manufactured uh, in small laboratories. You know, people were were cooking this stuff up in their in their in their homes and yeah. in their in bathrooms and in basements and sometimes even in cars, uh, um, and they were uh, doing it themselves. And, and then we got wise to that, and our legislature rightfully started to control the sale of the precursor chemicals. So you know, and as, as all of us know, when we go in to buy uh, pseudoephedrine now, you know, we have a cold and we want to get something to clear up our sinuses, you have to show your driver's license. You have to you have to sign for that now. Mm -hmm. You can't buy lots of uh, pseudoephedrine anymore, and that's what that you have to have that chemical to make methamphetamine. So uh, that slowed down, basically wiped out the existence of meth labs, which is a good thing because they're very uh, dangerous environmentally and uh, potentially dangerous uh, in terms of blowups and and fires and and, and that sort mm. of thing. And, and and back in the early 2000s, Dakota County had the the, the largest number of meth labs in the entire state was right here in Dakota County, you know, and so that's a good thing. The labs are pretty much gone. Um, but where's the meth coming from? It's coming from Mexico. It's coming from the drug cartels that we mm. read about. And with those drug cartels comes violence and gangs and the distribution networks that go with it. This is scary stuff. I mean, this is really, uh, when you're dealing with illegal drugs and the sale of those illegal drugs, uh, this is a scary, scary business and, and a dangerous and a violent business. Oh. Again, yeah, that's significant. 50% increase in illegal drug offenses. Um, well, um, as we wrap things up here, um, what, what out of the, the numbers that come out surprised you? Was there anything that surprised you? You know, I wanted to just mention that we, we uh, uh, had fewer crimes of violence overall last year uh, than we did uh, in 2014. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, uh, a slight decrease. Uh, but listen, a decrease nonetheless, and, yep. and that's a positive thing. Um, and and so we, you know, we had 431 uh, cases that we charged involving crimes of violence last year in Dakota County. Again, it's really, yeah. You know, listen, as I said earlier, you know, one crime of violence is one too many. But uh, but 431 in a county of our size is a really low number statistically. You know, when we compare ourselves to other communities across our. Our nation, so it's is a relatively safe community, um, but you know we're concerned, and uh, um, uh, we had uh, uh, 230 uh, cases involving assaults. That was the number one uh, felony crime, you know, and you know property crimes are also a concern. But as I mentioned, a lot mm -hmm. of those are, are drug related. So uh, listen, I think overall Dakota County is is uh, in a good place in, in terms of our our crime. I, I will also mention, you know, what's the biggest public safety risk? You know, your Viewers might ask, you, "What's the biggest public safety risk to me?" Well, obviously, if you're not using uh, uh, or abusing illegal drugs, that would be a huge concern. Mm -hmm. But for most of us, for us law-abiding citizens, it's what happens behind the wheel of a car. You know, uh, that's where we're at the biggest risk of danger in our society. And uh, unfortunately, uh, in Minnesota last year, we had uh, the largest increase in uh, traffic fatalities uh, that we had uh, since I think the early 1900s. Uh, uh, so, or, or the mid 1900s, 1950, I think, was you have to go back that many years before there was that big of an increase. So, listen, there were more traffic fatalities in our state. Dakota County had had a number of those uh, traffic fatalities uh, last year as well. Um, yeah, in the uh, state of Minnesota, it's 410, I believe, 410 yeah. killed in traffic-related um, deaths, and uh, versus. 370 in 2014. Yeah, it's you know that's unfortunate. It's a big increase, that's you know, and it's a lot of that is uh, about 30% uh, uh, of those are related to uh, drunk driving or uh, driving under the influence of a controlled substance, impaired driving. Uh, what the the biggest and growing factor is distracted driving, and mm -hmm. that can be just as dangerous as driving while under the influence of alcohol. And what does that mean? Well, it means using cell phones, mm -hmm. using them uh, to dial, using them to text. Uh, it's really a huge problem, and it's and it's a particularly a problem with the young drivers. Mm -hmm. And listen, if I have one message to send uh, to the folks out uh, in our community, do not text and drive. Do not be careful. Be very careful about you even using a cell phone in a car. It's dangerous, 
and it can result in a split second, uh, your life being gone or uh, uh, the life of a loved one being lost or someone being seriously injured. And obviously we want to try to avoid those things. Certainly, certainly. Well, Mr. Backstrom, thank you for your time and, and sharing uh, the information here with us. And uh, thank you at home for uh, watching us. This is Tom Wright with your Dakota County Attorney, Jim Backstrom, and sharing your 2015 statistics on juvenile crimes and adult felonies. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Thank you.